Well, we've already re-examined, look back and flash back to the first half of this schedule, we thought initially. Now it's time for UCLA football. Let's take a look of what's to come. Obviously the big two games, but let's dissect the second half of UCLA football's schedule. What are the toughies? What are the easy cupcakes? What will give UCLA some trouble potentially and Chip Kelly some fits moving forward Man, beyond just the Oregon and SC game? Locked on UCLA. Let's hit that music, baby. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On UCLA. It's your favorite host, Zach Anderson Yoxheimer. You can follow me on Twitter at Zach and Yox with some underscores mixed in. You can follow the show Twitter at Locked On Bruins. In the meantime, thanks for making Locked On UCLA your first listen every day. It's free wherever you get your podcasts. It's Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever. There's so many podcast platforms. Just know it's free and you can get it wherever, including on YouTube. Thanks for watching the show, commenting, subscribing. I know we're getting through by a week. Basketball still ramping up in practices. We're going to get to a preview for basketball coming up with the final episode of the week. In the meantime, we're still talking football, and we're going to look towards the second half of the schedule. I know there's two big ones that are circled, but for now, let's take a look overall, including those two big ones, what will be the interesting games moving forward for UCLA football during the rest of the season. In the meantime, let's remind you that this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. They've got you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online where the game starts. So in the meantime, Bruin fans, let's get those hands in the air. Let's rock and roll. Eight clap time. I know some of you guys don't like my eight claps. We'll get ready. Let's get let's get rocking and rolling. Let's get it out early this time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fight. Let's go. A little slower than normal, kind of taking it back, relaxing. We're not looking at what's been. We're looking at what's to come for Locked On UCLA. Let's get to it. UCLA, six games in. They are 6-0, 3-0 in Pac-12 play. Still one of the few unbeatens in the Pac-12, along with SC and Oregon. Those two teams right in front of UCLA in terms of their games on the schedule. And while those are the games to focus on, and while we've talked about it and everybody's circled, there are three important games in the schedule. Utah, Oregon, and SC, UCLA already entered the challenge to bell number one, passed out with flying colors. Oregon's to come, and that, as some of you have already alluded to in the comments, will be arguably the biggest game in the program's history, in, especially in recent history, to a point, for UCLA football. It is what it is, and that can make or break whether UCLA wants to have the dream season beyond just the Rose Bowl, even higher than that for even better goals, or if they're going to have to play for you, play against USC and play just get to the Pac-12 title game. So let's get to it. UCLA with this home-heavy schedule, already playing four home, five home games. Excuse me, five home games. It's so many home games you just can't even can't even fathom how many home games they've already played. They've got five home games. They played one road game. And what one could say is still a road-heavy back half of the schedule still finishes with still three home games and three road games in this schedule that featured eight home games, true home games, and four true road games for the Bruins. So UCLA start off with Oregon next week. They got a new head coach, Dan Lanning. They've got all those things. Their only loss was to Georgia, 49-3. to We're going to get to the deep dive of it more in the next week, so we're not going to spend too much time in Oregon other than the fact that it speaks for itself. Whether they're two top 10 teams, whether it's 10 versus 11, at the moment they're ranked 11 and 12, back and forth in the standings, in the rankings, whatever it may be. UCLA playing just their second road game of the season in arguably one of college football's craziest atmospheres and definitely the toughest in the Pac-12, in Eugene, in Autzen. And UCLA has to find a way to come out with a win to keep the winning streak going, currently at 9 overall, dating back to last year, and try to improve to 7-0. UCLA beats Oregon, then they're almost kind of locked in, if you think of, if they no more slip-ups beyond an SC game, 
They, they're almost locked in if they can just win through. 5-1 and one for the Bruins, Pac-12 title game. 4-2, and two, might see them on the outside looking in. 6-0, and oh, and we're, we're continued to dream with 6-0 and oh in terms of just how crazy the season can get. But for UCLA, an Oregon game, it's between the Oregon and SC game, a win and where the other, it kind of puts them in a good spot to really control their own destiny to get to the Pac-12 title game, barring some other Pac-12 shenanigans as there always is in terms of wins, losses, upsets down the stretch, whatever it may be for whoever it is. UCLA, the Oregon game represents its own challenges. We're not going to talk too much about it, even though I spent the beginning of the podcast talking about it. Now, let's get to the the meat of the schedule in between Oregon and USC. At Oregon, middle of the day, everybody's going to look at it. National national viewership, we're excited for that. But it's the two out of three games between Stanford and Arizona and Arizona State. Both of those are at home. Two of those are at home. Stanford and Arizona get the ASU game at home. Stanford this year... You know, it's just an interesting Cardinal team. You just don't expect a one and four team. Coach David Shaw having a rough go over at the farm, especially that heartbreaking bounce off the back of somebody to turn into an Oregon State win when they thought they had their second win of the year. Regardless, UCLA's emotions will be flying very high or very low come that Stanford game. It'll either be an angry UCLA team when they play Stanford at home when they when they welcome them in in the last October game of the month, October 29th, which is also homecoming, so hopefully a good festive crowd. It's either going to be one that rewards the fa- rewards the Bruins for a job well done, or tries to push them forward for the rest of the season. Stanford, there there shouldn't be too much trouble with Stanford, although you don't want to ever discredit a Cardinal team. They've ruined UCLA teams in the past. Although I know you guys don't like me to talk about the past and how that weighs back and forth with UCLA football momentum going forward. You can never discredit Stanford, but the Bruins should have no problem with the Cardinal, especially at home, a homecoming, hopefully a good festive atmosphere. First time seeing a UCLA team in three weeks, if you include the bye, the road game, three weeks in between home games. Seems like it'll be an eternity since UCLA's had a home game this year, especially with the three-game home stand. So ending October, UCLA very well should be in the thick of things. Before what I think, and what I think will be a very tough Arizona State game, it, it, one that I've kind of gone back and forth with as into terms of why that game should be important or not important. I'm going to lean with it being important, but not before we tell you some words from Bet Online. So for Bet Online, oops, let's not do that. For Bet Online, let's get right to it. Bet Online. They are their number one source for football betting information this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, in-depth articles, and analysis on every game you can find. They remain, BetOnline does, your continued source for all your sports wagering information with all your live betting and up-to-minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games, events, such as Major League Baseball with the postseason going on, MMA, boxing, golf. Just go to look up BetOnline or use the mobile, use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, picking back where we left off here for Locked On UCLA, Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, thanks for tuning in. Go like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for all the support so far. All right, this is why I think this Arizona State game is going to be so tough. We've already talked about first couple of games coming after the bye. Oregon speaks for itself. Stanford should be a cupcake game as we're kind of re-examining today. What will be the toughies in the second half of the schedule? Obviously, Oregon and USC, top of the list, top dogs. Okay, that's those. there's been three games circled. We've had them circled. Everybody's had them circled. That would define UCLA's season. And regardless of how those two games go, I think Arizona State will be the toughest road game left on the schedule besides Oregon game. Okay, why do we think that? They've already fired their coach. They lost to Eastern Michigan at home did Arizona State. Who who loses to Eastern Michigan at home? Well, it eventually got their coach fired. And then all of a sudden, they came out and upset Washington a week after UCLA had a almost kind of season rejuvenating win, a national attention media attention grabbing win against Washington. It was kind of shocking to go watch Arizona State just beat Washington trailing early, put up points, kind of show things they hadn't shown all season before with the Sun Devils, and this is why I think Arizona State will be interesting, because ASU 
as kind of an interesting schedule moving forward leading into that UCLA game. ASU right now, they're sitting 2-4, and 1-2 and two in the Pac-12 conference, not really competing. They have lost to now a top-10 Oklahoma State team on the road by 17, losing to Eastern Michigan the week after that. Their only two wins have come to, against an FCS team in Northern Arizona to start the year, and then upsetting a then-top-25, arguably top-20 Washington team, 45-38 to at Sun Devil Stadium. They have a bye this week, just like UCLA does. They're resting up, trying to refresh in things with their interim coaching staff. And then they get two road games at Stanford and at Colorado. Two teams at the very bottom of the Pac-12 to where if ASU can take care of Stanford on the road and then continue to do what everybody's done to Colorado this year, which is just beat them up, beat them around, and take down the Buffaloes, they could, the Sun Devils could, be on a three-game winning streak on the verge, on the precipice of bowl eligibility with five wins walking into that UCLA game at home, their first home game in a month, because they'll go from October 8th, well, the Sun Devils, to November 5th. That stretch, there's no home games, just two road games and a bye, which, good Lord, UCLA won't even see that long of a stretch without a home game, but whatever it is, UCLA will be facing a Sun Devil stadium that will be red hot, packed, probably a 7.30, 7.45 kick on a Saturday to start November, and UCLA, well, regardless of how things go against Oregon, they're still very well in the thick of things in the Pac-12 title race. ASU could be right there on bowl eligibility, kind of turning around their season and re-energizing their fan base with an ASU team who, remember last year, they knocked out UCLA. They were right, all right, UCLA was feeling good last year, took that one loss to Fresno State, and then ASU, that knockout blow in the Rose Bowl by 15 points. And it seems like the Bruins in recent years when games have mattered most against ASU, in some cases, at home especially, haven't come through on the road a little bit more. But for the most time, most part in the last decade, the Bruins haven't come through against ASU in certain cases. At home mostly on the road, they've taken care of business, early Jim Mora era, whatever it may be. But that ASU game could stand out to be one of those games that it was tricky, it wasn't tricky, and now I think it can be a very tricky matchup for the Bruins as they could definitely slip up against the Sun Devils, who, for no reason at all, they could come in and make that game incredibly competitive. They already took it to Washington, putting up points. They've seen already a top-10 team multiple times this year playing at the moment, a top-10 at SC. They played a top-10 Oklahoma State team, road games, whatever it may be. They won't be faced by what the Bruins will bring by that point of the season, and they probably could be coached up with a lot of energy riding and positive momentum for that Sun Devil game. That's a game I really think UCLA could struggle with. Then UCLA comes back after the ASU game, November 12th, and they take on Arizona. Arizona right now currently has a better record than ASU. They're 3-3. Three and three. Arizona's schedule is pretty hard the rest of the way. I think they're going to fade very hard. They barely beat North Dakota State, a usual FCS power at home. But the Wildcats have done what they needed to do. They've got their three wins. yet. They allow 200 rush yards per game, over 200 rushing yards. If I got these notes correct, yeah, 228 rushing yards. They're 3-3. Three and three. UCLA should run all over the Wildcats. Easily, easily. This would be another one of those games where it looked like Charbonnet was breaking guys' ankles in the open field with big-time moves like he did against Colorado back in that time when Colorado had such a terrible run defense. Now it's probably something similar against Arizona, which is interesting because that's the tune-up for the one that everybody's waiting for November 19th against SC. But the ASU game, spending a lot of time for UCLA, saying, all right, that's the real, that's the one non-ranked, unranked opponent that's going to probably give UCLA fits. It's one of those games you can pull up the numbers, and I think that's the one, the ASU game, that will be the tricky one beyond the two big ones that can give UCLA fits. And I will point out another one after that. Any road game can give teams fits. But it is that UCLA-ASU game that will give them fits. Get Arizona. UCLA should run all over the Wildcats. And then USC and what we expect, hopefully, should be game day. The dream is it'll be two undefeated teams. Well, ideally, there, you know, there could be one team or arguably blow, both coming in with a loss with two both teams. USC playing at Utah, UCLA playing at Oregon in the next two weeks. So by the time they meet, it could easily be two one-loss teams, two unbeatens, one one-loss, whatever it may be. You get the Arizona tune-up, 
get them locked and loaded. As long as they don't look past the Cats way, way, way too much, they should set themselves up for either a one-loss or unbeaten matchup with USC, who I'm not going to guesstimate their record, but they have a tough one. And, you know, they, they have some interesting matchups coming forward. But UCLA, SC, and the Rose Bowl will be one that we will be talking about for ages. Simply that, that's how we're going to put it. They'll be talking about it for a long time. Funny enough, though, if both teams walk in unbeaten, USC, that ends their Pac-12 schedule. UCLA, they only play the likes of Cal after that. If both teams come in unbeaten, that would pretty much mean they would go and meet two weeks later. So there's a chance where, as important as, the, as that November 19th matchup is, as people have already continued to point out, as I've even maybe slightly pointed out in some cases, December 2nd, I think it is, that Pac-12 title game in Vegas at Allegiant Stadium, the new home of the Pac-12 title game, for who knows how long, could easily host a rematch of UCLA versus somebody if they take care of business. One win, one win, Only one loss across the way, UCLA's easily in the Pac-12 title game, as you have already pointed out in the comments, or as, you know, hitting me up, whatever it may be, saying, eh, Hey, one a one loss Pac-12 team shouldn't make or won't make a Pac-12 won't make a college football playoff. That seems to be the consensus from you know the audience. We'll see how things play out. But unbeaten UCLA very well in the thick of things come Black Friday into a college football playoff when they continue to build the anticipation with the rankings. One loss UCLA for the most part playing for Rose Bowl berth when they're playing in either an SC or Cal, whatever it may be. That SC game is the one that. If they don't face off twice this year, they'll be talking talking about for years. If they face off twice, then it'll be interesting to see how that first game goes compared to the second game, which would be on a neutral field. Then, after all the talk about how that ASU game will be tough, the SC-Oregon games being incredibly interesting, then UCLA has one of those sleepy Black Friday games yet again in the middle of the day in Berkeley this time against the Cal Golden Bears and what I believe for the time being will be one of the last times they'll go to Berkeley, barring any more conference realignment of some sort, conference shuffling, future scheduling, however it works out, UCLA will be going to Memorial Stadium and taking on the Golden Bears, who they themselves, just like ASU as I was kind of teasing possibly, could be on the precipice of a bowl eligible team. Cal right now is three and two. They have a very tough schedule down the stretch leading into that UCLA game where I think they could go two and four, however it goes, with a Stanford and I think Colorado game in the mix there. So if they take care of business, upset one, who knows? They could be either bowl eligible, could the Golden Bears, or be on the edge of it, leaving UCLA to play a team on a short week after an emotional USC game at home. And we've seen this story before, USC fans, or in with the USC fans and coming in and saying, hey, you know, talk so much trash, come in, UCLA knocks him down, says, all right, let's go, what's up? And then it says, all right, let's go, let's rock and roll. UCLA's top dog in LA, and only for them to be talking trash next week for UCLA to drop to, say, Stanford. Let, let's let's go, UCLA fans, I think they can get through Cal. Although Cal, for the moment, despite who they've played so far, you know, a lackluster Notre Dame team on the road, with, which Cal lost to UCLA is facing a Cal team, I think, that has some decent numbers against the run. Only 119 rushing yards per game, which is far better than some of the teams UCLA has faced so far this season. So it could be a sneaky, tough short week against a maybe sneaky, tough run defense against the Golden Bears in this kind of sneak preview for UCLA, in which, all right, that's a week before a Pac-12 title game. Are they playing for their Pac-12 title game hopes? Are they playing to keep the dream season alive, keep the winning streak alive? All that would be riding on a short week to which Cal could very well say, hey, we're here to ruin the season. All the jokes about the Regents and everything can be thrown in this game. Hey, we want a piece of that revenue. Well, we're going to take it by ruining your season. I think, you know, that would be an interesting one on a short week and a Black Friday. It's about all that talk. So in the meantime, the easiest game, easiest games for UCLA, probably the, the Arizona game in terms of the matchup with the running game, Stanford, the worst record of any team UCLA at the moment is going to face down the rest of the way. You never can count them out, but should be a cupcake depending on the emotions of that Oregon game. Easily SC and Oregon games, they're going to define the season leading up to any postseason bowl of any sort. And then the toughest road game beyond the obvious two will be the ASU game, I think. They, I think, will be very 
they'll be trending upward coming into that game with a rocking atmosphere, and UCLA should be wary heading into that one. So that's my re-examining the second half of this schedule. A lot more road games than the first six games. They finally have to go travel on the road and, most importantly, win on the road if they want to define their season beyond just the games at the Rose Bowl. Uh, we hope the dream continues. They hope the dream's live. And we can't wait to talk about game week with UCLA and Oregon coming up soon. And also coming up soon, I'll look more into basketball. I know you guys asked about it. We're talking about it for Friday and maybe a little teaser next week, too, leading up to the Oregon Duck UCLA Bruin matchup next week in Autzen Stadium. Let's get to it. In the meantime, UCLA fans, go check out Locked On Pac 12. Make that your second listen today. Spencer McLaughlin is the host. And he's also going to tell us why. And we'll, we'll probably be having a crossover episode of some sort. Or I'll jump on Locked On Pac-12. Whatever it may be, he's your source for the Pac-12, Locked On Pac-12. In the meantime, this has been Locked On to UCLA. Get your hands in the air, Bruins fans. Get rocking and rolling. Final eight clap. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On to UCLA. Go Bruins!